Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, today I wanted to talk about some deep water culture versus maybe the crack key method. Um, I know I haven't dived into it a whole lot yet. We have seen my uh, drained waste on the Floraflex system. Um, I have a lot of people all the time ask me about deep water culture. Deep water culture, it is it's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong, you can have some happy, healthy, large plants with large yields, but you really have to stay on top of stuff. Again, like we talked about, pH, why pH is important. In a hydro system, you've got to be between 5.5 and 5.8. That's what's going to make all of my nutrients readily available when your roots are just sitting in water. Um, the way this deep water culture is going to work, or even the cracky method, we, we can talk about both right now. Um, you're always going to have your bucket, so I got my uh, our empty bucket here. We've got our net cup. I've got some of the hydrogen here as well. And we've got some starter plugs um, and also air stones and air pumps. Now, on a crack key method, the way it works is your plants are going to be sitting in your bucket like this. You're going to have your hydrogen rocks in here. You're going to have a starter plug or however you want to start your uh, plant inside of there. You're going to start by filling the water all the way to the top so it's actually touching the bottom of your starter plug in the net cup. Now what's going to happen is as that seed or clone whatever starts to have root development, it's going to grow into our buckets. Now the way the crack key method is, is your plants are going to just start drinking up that water. So as the water level goes down, oxygen is here to kind of feed some of your root systems. The problem I see with the crack key method, it's completely fine for lettuce and leafy greens, things like that. Now if you're growing tomatoes, peppers, even cannabis plants, the, the problem I see with this is your roots are always sitting in this water. Anytime roots sit in water, you start to get root rot. You get root rot, your plants get droopy, and then they slowly start to die. So that's why if I'm doing any type of this method, it's not that much harder to throw you an air stone in there with an air pump. That's it. That's literally the difference between cracky method and deep water culture is an air stone and an air pump, which is going to cost you 25 bucks and you're going to have a much happier, healthier life of your plants. Water can only hold with this type of system. Obviously, water can hold up to 100% oxygen, but with an air pump like this, you're taking all of our ambient air that's here. There's only so much oxygen that is in our air, anyways. You know, you got CO2, you got different elements that are floating there. So, using just your normal air pump, you're only going to get about 18% dissolved oxygen into this water which is great for your plants because, I mean, when they're, those roots are just sitting in that water, they need as much oxygen as possible to help to keep you from getting root rot. Now, in a deep water culture, I always run enzymes, uh, whether it's canazyme or hygrozyme or something like that. Those enzymes will actually break down the dead root material. So as those things start to turn brown on you, that enzyme just attacks that dead cellulose and helps from, pr to promote more white root growth. Um, so today we're going to just set up a DWC just so you have an idea. I'm going to run it in this tent behind me so that way you guys will be able to see literally from today until these plants are done finishing. Um, what I like to do, I'll, I've got water already set up over here so I'm not just going to jump to the water right now. But we got water, literally we're going to fill these things up with our hydrogen rocks. I recommend if you buy these hydrogen rocks brand new, they have a lot of dust on them. Make sure you rinse that stuff off. Uh, if you don't, in the very beginning, your first couple weeks, you will start to get that dust gets in there, your pH gets crazy. It's just so much simpler to put a water hose on one side of the bag, rinse them off. Um, once you've used them before, you can use high strength hydrogen peroxide. Now, I don't recommend using the stuff that you can just buy at uh, like CVS or Walgreens. That's usually a 2 to a 3% solution. We've got some of the higher strength, like the 29%, the 32%. It's a high oxidizer, but it will help clean up anything. I mean, it will break down algaes and any kind of growth of anything that you have there. Um, I actually, in this hydro system, will run it every week. Now, H2O2, or hydrogen peroxide, is only viable for 48 hours because like I said it's H2O2 so after 48 hours that last oxygen molecule will fall off and it turns into water so don't be afraid that it's going to hurt your plants or anything like that because like I said it's only active for 48 hours and then it turns right back into water and during those 48 hours it will break down any kind of algae growth that you have there so especially in a system like this where there's you know you're going to have a little bit of water that's going to be here you're going to have light so light water it makes algae it just creates a huge mess that's a pain in the tail but it's easily preventable just by using some hydrogen peroxide um, now we're going to fill this thing most of the way up. Now I'm going to start my seed here in just a second. I've got some 
but the way I like to do it is to just a, a traditional peat starter plug, uh, perfect for starting seeds, for cuttings, anything like that in it. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to grow out through this. So you can put this in a hydro system, you can put it directly in the soil, you can even put this in a cocoa. Really good thing that's not going to break down and deteriorate in your system. Uh, so what I like to do is get these things to where it's, I can put my plug almost right on the top because when we start this system, we have to have enough water in there, especially if you're starting it from seeds, to touch the bottom of this starter plug. So you kind of want to get it in there far enough and that way when the water is there, it's going to slowly wick up into that starter plug. Because I've seen, a, I mean, I've personally done it before and just forgot and wasn't really paying attention. As that water level goes down, your starter plug dries out and then your plant is either not going to germinate or it's going to slowly die on you. So that's by far the easiest thing to do. As you can see, I've got it filled almost all the way up. So we got the starter plug right here. We got our hydrogen all around it. Um, I'm going to start this all the way up to the top. This, this bucket is going to be filled completely to the top. Um, and I'm going to do, we're going to put, have to put nutrients in it as well, but we're going to use a very small amount. Uh, for germinating seeds, I like to be at about 150 to 200. Normal tap water is close to 80 to about 120. So we, we want a little bit of food there when they do germinate, but we don't want to burn these things. Um, I'm going to run the floor flex in this one again. I ran them on my deep water, or my uh, drained away system. I was happy with the results that I got. Um, it has almost everything that you need, and it takes a very, very small amount to get to where you need to be. Now, I know we were talking about oxygen and the stones that you use. Now, they have several different options. I've got just your traditional, this is a medium sized one. I honestly do not know what this is made of. I should, but I don't. But this is a medium sized one. They have some small ones and they have the large ones. These are okay. I like to use these more in just like a reservoir if like I'm just needing some oxygen in there to keep my water from going stagnant. I honestly, in one of these deep water cultures, prefer these. Uh, this is just an air disc, but as you can see, we're going to have a lot more surface area with this than we are with this. So the way this thing's going to go, it's just throwing out um, oxygen bubbles everywhere, and it's just going, you know, kind of all on the sides and in the middle. This guy is going to be more focused. This is going to sit on the bottom of our bucket, and it just, I mean, you should, I'll turn it on here in a minute, and you'll see all the bubbles just fly off of this. I can get more dissolved oxygen out of these than I can out of these. So this is the one we're going to use in this system. And I've got just your regular old traditional air pump. You know, this is a, um, a one outlet from Active Aqua. Any of these one outlets are perfect for a five gallon, <coughs> excuse me, a five gallon bucket. Now, if you're doing bigger reservoirs or multiple buckets, you are going to have to jump up because these are really only made for a five gallon bucket. I mean, if you worst case, like say I'm making a compost tea or something like that, this can work 10, 15 gallons just because you're wanting some oxygen to feed your microbes. But in my DWC, one of these, one of these guys is going to be the best method to go with. And again, I got my pH meter. We're going to pH balance everything to make sure we've got this thing all set up and ready to go. Um, so yeah, so. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to get this thing all set up. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and get this water, uh, the right pH and the right PPMs that we want. Um, I'll show you what we're running with right now. This is, I use RO water for everything just because I like to get all the minerals out so that way I know what is in my water. All right, you can see, wow, pH is crazy high on this stuff today. But nutrients should be right around zero. Yeah, so we have zero uh, parts per million. pH, I will focus on the pH here in just a little bit, but I'm more rather focus on what my nutrient level is first because then I can adjust my pH from there. So this thing to, is going to take very, very small amounts. This Floraflex Nutrients is, is crazy strong. So I've got the V1. I'm going to start with a, um, a half of a teaspoon. And this is a, almost a full five gallons. There's probably, I'd say, 4.75 in there. So we're gonna put one scoop of the V1, one scoop of the V2. And these are both half teaspoons. And this should give us pretty close to what we're looking for. I know when I was mixing it up on my drained away system, one teaspoon of each of those gave me close to like three to four hundred parts per million so it's this stuff is super concentrated um, it's just basically they're taking the water out so you got pure nutrients in there yeah so you can see 
That was literally a half of a teaspoon of each one of those, and it's about 170 to 180. Uh, now what's going to happen is we're going to have to, well, you know what, we might be good. Uh, you can see that actually did drop my pH because we want to be between like 5, 5, 5, 8. You know what, we're just going to run it at this because we're just starting seeds. So it's got a little bit of food in there. It's not going to burn anything, and it is going to be where we want it to be at. So we've got nutrient level. we got our pH where we want it to be. Next, let's, we've got to have our air stone, our air pump, and all that stuff. And I've got... All right, so we've got just a regular air pump. Now these things do come with these little suction cups, which are pretty cool, because it's gonna help to keep this on the very bottom of our bucket. Well, I should have been prepared ahead of time. All right, so these literally just go on the bottom of your air stone like this, or your air disc, instead of an air stone. Now they make cheaper ones. If you see those like blue aqua ones that usually you'll see them in a, um, a fish tank, try to avoid those those things snap and break so easy that in my opinion they're just a huge piece of junk so i always try to stay away from those go to your hydro store get you a good solid air pump or an air disc it will make the difference in um, a dwc for sure now we're just going to put this on the bottom get your hands all nice and wet hook it up to our air pump and just plug her in so super simple dwc is I, I want to say it's it's easy, but it's not. So it's one of those things. Here, I'm gonna let you guys see what this looks like. But, but as you can see, you got that uh, that circumference area on there versus the other one. I mean, you just get a lot more dissolved oxygen in one of these versus the uh, other type of air stones. So once we have that all set up, I've got which we just did a second ago, and I you've got uh, actually you know what? Let's do this. I forgot to do this thing first. So take. You're, you're either going to have to drill a hole in the top here, or you literally can just take this in here and go through one of these side holes. And as you can see, that's going to come right through there, and that way you get that nice seal on your bucket lid. And then from there, we'll go ahead and stick that back down in there. See, even the most prepared people still have little things that you got to accomplish. So, now then, as you can see, I really want you to be able to see where my water level is. So you can see that water is actually touching the bottom of this. And now, we could actually put a few more rocks in there, you know, just to have them around like this. But what those, um, the hydrogen, what those rocks are going to do, you probably see that I've got some other ones that aren't hydrogen or um, hydroton or LECA is what I, I see it called a lot of the time. I think that's like the actual name is LECA. Hydrogen is the uh, brand name, but all it is, it's expanded clay. And what that's going to do is it's gonna allow, as those roots grow, it gives it something to hang on to, because eventually all of those roots are gonna grow into the bottom of this bucket. And kind of like the crack key method, as the plants grow, you use less water. I'm gonna do the same thing in a, a DWC, by the time these plants get big enough, we'll probably only keep about three gallons of water in there. And that just gives you enough oxygen up top, plus you got your dissolved oxygen down below. So as you can see, we've got this thing basically set up. I'm gonna pop, these seeds might be a little old. I had some uh, cherry citrus from a couple years ago that ended up uh, seeding on me. So we're gonna put a few of these in here. Just, I'm gonna put two, I never, you, I, I really never put two seeds in one of these, but like I said, I don't know if these things are going to germinate or not. If they don't, I've got more. And honestly, that's about it. And then as this thing keeps growing, I'll, I'll keep doing an update. But I do have our little, this is the uh, an HLG 100 that I'm going to run over this. Typically, I know in my lighting uh, video, we were talking about what this uh, light will actually do. I mean, we're looking at four to five ounces in a two by two foot area. So I'm gonna run this thing and, and see what we can get out of it. We're gonna do the same thing where I'll either run a trellis later and, and kind of focus it out, or we'll do a lot of topping. Uh, it just depends on how this plant really does grow. All right, guys, so that was it. That's how simple it is to set up a DWC, deep water culture. Um, now, 
as the weeks go on now, I will change out that reservoir every single week. Uh, the reason is, is as your plants grow into there, your root zone gets into that bucket, they're going to start eating nutrients. Uh, the problem is, is you don't know what they're eating. They, they might be eating more micros, they may be eating more macros. So that's why every single week, it's the best thing just to clean it out. Let's get some fresh water in there, fresh nutrients, so that way your plants are ready to uptake and it's available for your plants. All right, dude, so check back with me. I'm going to do this um, a weekly update until these plants are finished. Don't forget, like and subscribe, guys. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good one.